Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, um, doing a different video than the normal video game type videos that I do. Uh, this year I'd gone to Las Vegas on vacation, had a great time at the Venetian. I recommend anyone go to the Venetian. And I decided I was going to do a top 10 um, type video instead of doing a blog. And these are subject to my opinion and my own personal experience. These are 10 places I would recommend people stay in Las Vegas. And, you know, I mean, there are several channels I follow that do travel YouTube type channels and focus specifically on Las Vegas and our locals. Um, I'll post those links below in the um, section and you can go see their channels. I recommend you go see those YouTube channels. And this list is not a rank per se. Um, again, these are just 10 resorts I would recommend people go to in Las Vegas if you decide you want to go to Las Vegas. Now, number 10, Luxor. I've stayed at the Luxor three times, and once was my choice, once was with, was with family, and the third time was with friends. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, because it is a very unique experience. I mean, if you're going to stay at the Luxor, stay in the Pyramid, because it's you got the inclinators that ride up the sides, and they only go to certain floors. And that's the other thing I'll recommend is if you stay at the Luxor, get as high a floor as possible because those inclinators only go up to so many floors. And if you're on a lower floor, you got to walk possibly around the entire exterior hallway of the pyramid to get to your room. And the great part about the Luxor is its location. They have a great selection of restaurants, including a food court. Uh, you can go over to Mandalay Bay. You can go over to Excalibur. You can get to New York, New York. And you can get the MGM Grand, where there's the monorail station that you can travel anywhere up and down the strip. The casino is really nice. And... The rooms, well, like I said, if you stay in the Pyramid Room, it's very interesting. It's kind of weird, in a way, but fun. If you want a normal type room, you can stay in what they call their Ziggurat Towers, which have normal, normal hotel rooms. But Luxor is one of the places that I'm recommending you stay at. And again, it's number 10 in the list. Number 9, Paris. And I stayed here once, and I definitely would stay at the Paris a second time or other times. It's just I have other places I want to stay at. Uh, the restaurant selection is more high-end. You can go to Bailey's or Planet Hollywood for less expensive restaurants. Further on down from Planet Hollywood is Harmon Corners, which has McDonald's and other areas in it. But overall, I like the Paris Casino. I haven't stayed at the, um, I didn't use the pool. But overall, I would say, you know, I mean, the Paris is a nice place to stay. And it's within, since it's sort of center strip, you can walk over to Planet Hollywood. You can walk over to the Cosmopolitan. You can walk over to Bellagio. Uh, you got the Bailey's monorail station if you want to use that. And again, it's a nice place to stay. 
Number eight, Planet Hollywood is right next to the Paris, and it's Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood can be very intimidating because the casino is large, but it also has the Miracle Mile shops. The pool is decent. Um, restaurant selection is very good because of the Miracle Mile shops. You got from high end to low end, as far as cost for restaurants, I would say good selection in Planet Hollywood. It is center strip. I mean, you got it's right next to it is Harmon Corners, which is a great place. They have a Walgreens for cheap shopping if you want to buy your beer and your soda and not pay casino prices, water, etc. Um, overall, it's just, you know, you can walk across to the Cosmopolitan, you can walk across to the Bellagio, you can walk next to Paris, you know, and it, Bally Station, again, is your monorail station you would be using if you want to use the monorail. But overall, I would say, you know, the experience I had at Planet Hollywood was really good. The rooms have movie memorabilia in them, and they're actually larger than normal hotel rooms, which makes them feel a little more luxurious. Overall, like I said, it is a nice place to stay. Number seven, Mirage. The list is Mirage. And this is a resort that I really wanted to stay in when it first opened. And when I finally got to stay there, it was definitely something I really enjoyed. I mean, it's one of the older resorts and it's actually up for sale right now. And it's, like I said, it's a real nice experience. The casino is wonderful. It has restaurants which tend to be a little more high-end, but you can walk across the street to Harrah's, and there's a McDonald's, there's also a Denny's, there's um, various, there's a Walgreens, etc. It, it's within walking distance, and you can go to Venetian. The Volcano Show is really nice. Um, I recommend seeing it. I did a video of it, and hopefully I'll put a link to it in the upper right corner. And the other thing is that, you know, you wind up, the rooms are normal hotel room size. So you don't get that luxury there. The pool is, again, really nice. I've been to that pool, and they actually do have a more, how shall I say, adult pool. It costs you a fortune to go to, but, you know, if you're a guy, it costs you a fortune. Um, in the end, I would say, you know, Mirage is definitely somewhere where you would want to stay, and hopefully, if it's sold, the new owners don't change that kind of unique vibe it has. The show Love, I would recommend seeing if you stay at the Mirage. And overall, if you wanted to use the monorail, you just walk across the street and you get it at Harrah's, which then you can go north or south on the strip. Number six, Palms. The Palms currently is closed. And it's not supposed to open until 2022. It's going to be under new ownership. And hopefully they don't change a lot because... Even though the Palms is off strip, it had a very unique feel to it. The casino was large. Um, the rooms were comfortable. Uh, it had a food court, a movie theater. Uh, some of the high-end restaurants are very good. If you wanted to get to the strip, you took a cab or Uber or a Lyft, and it was a very short ride right up to the strip to the Bellagio or Caesars. Um, if you want to be cheap, you can go across the street to the Gold Coast and get a shuttle that will take you to the Orleans and then from Orleans to Bailey's on the Strip and it'll cost you a buck to tip the driver. But down the road is the Rio Suites, which is, again, a very nice place. I haven't stayed there, but the casino's huge. 
But overall, if you're looking for a, a little more inexpensive but nice place to stay, the Palms is off strip, but not conveniently inconvenient off strip. Like I said, you can just grab a cheap Uber or cab to get to the strip. Number five, MGM Grand. Number five, MGM Grand. I'll admit, this place did intimidate me a little bit, and it is huge. And by huge, I mean if you entered the, at the strip and you were going to walk to the monorail station, and it is the nor southernmost point to the monorail station, which means you can travel up and down the strip freely if you're paying for a ticket, but it's a quarter mile walk from the strip to the monorail station. And the casino is huge. And that's one of the things that people feel is a drawback. But it does have a variety of suites and rooms. The normal room is not bad. I mean, I stayed there with family. And I stayed in one of their normal rooms. Well, then the next time I stayed there, I looked and did some shopping around. And I could get a suite, a real nice suite at MGM Grand for the price of a normal room in Bellagio or Venetian or Wynn. And I can tell you that suite was excellent. The only problem was it was the final door before you got to the emergency fire, fire exit. And I would walk from the elevator to my room and it was a workout. I jokingly tell people I would have I'd get a bucket of ice by the time I walked back to my room it was half melted. But don't let the size intimidate you. It is actually very inexpensive and very well located. You can go to the Oyo, Tropicana, New York, New York, Park, Excalibur, Luxor and Andalay Bay from MGM Grand, and you got the monorail station. Number four, Bellagio. I stayed at the Bellagio twice, like I stayed at MGM Grand twice. Uh, the first time I did a Fountain View room, and my only complaint was, yeah, I could see the fountain, but I was way off in a corner down the hotel tower where I couldn't see anything else except Paris and Planet Hollywood. And yeah, I can see the fountain. But I'd have to like put my head against the, the window and look to see anything else. And the next time I stayed in a normal room and non, you know, fountain view, it's a decent room. They're larger than normal rooms. They have a soaking tub, a shower in the bath. Uh, the pool is really nice. The restaurants are very expensive, high-end restaurants. I mean, it's not an inexpensive hotel. You can go across the street to Bailey's, and they have food court there at Bailey's. And there's also, if you walk down to Harmon Corners, there's, you know, cheap food there. Otherwise, I mean, it's a great location because you can go to Caesar's Palace, you can go to, you know, Bailey's, you can go to all kinds of different areas, Cosmopolitan, Planet Hollywood, Paris, you know, it's really a good location. And if you wanted to, you use Bailey's monorail to get back and forth up and down the strip. And the botanical gardens, really nice to walk through. There's like, it again, it's a, a large casino too. And I would recommend seeing O if you stay at Bellagio. But overall, I mean, you're paying for luxury, you get luxury. And the Bellagio, you're paying for luxury. Number three, Venetian. Now, I just recently stayed at the Venetian. And... I can say I wanted to stay at the Venetian for over 20 years, 
and I finally got to stay there. It's wonderful. Uh, the rooms are suites, so you're going to see they're larger than your standard rooms. In fact, I did a video showing my room, and hopefully, again, I'll link it up there, wherever. Um, it was very comfortable, very nice. Uh, they have a decent selection of restaurants. Um, there's some Walgreens nearby if you want to buy water and soda and beer. Uh, like I said, it is very nice. The only thing is, it's very spread out. And walking from Venetian through it to the Palazzo, which is the sister property, and then over to the Wynn, again, it's a lot of walking and it's very spread out. And I had a hard time at first navigating. One of the things I had a hard time finding was their Starbucks which is down by their convention center area. But the food and everything I ate there was really good. And again, the casino is good size. If you want to, you can go over to the Palazzo and gamble as well. Across the street is the MGM and Treasure Island. And then you walk down the street to Harrah's where you can get the monorail if you want to use the monorail. I would recommend staying at the Venetian. You can get some decent pricing at the Venetian, but it's never going to be really cheap. Number two, Mandalay Bay. Now, Mandalay Bay is the farthest south um, resort on the Strip, and it can be a drawback for a lot of people. There is a monorail that goes from Mandalay Bay to Excalibur, but it stops at 10 o'clock at night. So you're going to be 10 o'clock at night. And if you want to go to the anywhere and you thought, well, I want to go to Excalibur. It's 10 o'clock at night. I got to walk. Yes, it's interconnected. You're walking inside from Mandalay Bay to Luxor to Excalibur. But it is a long walk. Otherwise, if you want to go anywhere on the Strip, you have to use an Uber, Lyft, or a cab. If you don't use the monorail to get to Excalibur, etc., and you got to use the monorail to get to Excalibur and walk across over to MGM Grand in order to use the other monorail that gets you up and down the strip. But the casino is really nice and it's really large. The restaurants are wonderful. It's got a good variety of restaurants. Um, you can actually walk across the street to a McDonald's and you can now with the Las Vegas Raiders, you can walk to the Raiders, the stadium they play in, Allegiant Stadium. It's quite a walk, but you can walk. And on top of that, if you want to go see the... Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign, that historic sign. Ten minutes further south down the strip, and the sign is right there. The other thing I'd recommend is go see the shark exhibit. It's worth it. It's very nice. It, for the price, you get to see some creatures you don't normally see, and you get to see sharks, and they have a tunnel. The, the sharks will swim around, and it's again, it's a really nice exhibit. The other thing is the food, they have a food court, but it's by the shark exhibit, and it's a long walk to get to that food court, but there's also um, very nice high-end restaurants, and then what I would say is very nice mid-grade restaurants, and their buffet is awesome, and their pool is incredible. They've got like a wave pool, uh a lazy river ride, all kinds of fun stuff to do, and it's like a beach. So, I mean, and the rooms are actually larger than normal rooms. They're not technically suites, but they are good size and very comfortable. And that's why it's, I mean, I've stayed at Mandalay Bay twice, and that's why, I mean, I've enjoyed it, and that's why it is number two.
is I feel it's that good of a resort that its location, that weakness kind of is overridden. Number one, Cosmopolitan. I mean, the Cosmo is probably the best value of any resort on the Strip. You can get... Now, the Cosmo was originally intended to be a combination of hotel and condominiums. But it got hit with the recession in 2008. And the whole um, condominium part was refurbished to be hotel rooms. And you can get some really good value. You can get suite level rooms for very decent price. I stayed in a Fountain View one bedroom suite for the cost of a Bellagio room. And it was worth every penny. I mean, it's again, one of the best values on Strip. Not only that, but they have great selection of restaurants. The secret pizza place, if you know about that, very good pizza. Um, they have some low-end, like, street food restaurants in an area which you can get, and the food, again, is very good. Uh, the Chandelier Bar, um, Wicked Spoon is their buffet, and I ate there. That was, again, delicious. Overall, I didn't go to the pool, and the Cosmopolitan, the location, you can go across the street to the Harmon Corners, Walgreens there, pick up some cheap beer, cheap soda, cheap water, and bring it back to your hotel room. There's also a McDonald's if you needed to, or you can go to Planet Hollywood and eat at Earl's Sandwich. If you want to use the monorail, you'd have to go to Bailey's, but then next to the Cosmopolitan is the Bellagio, and again, Planet Hollywood. you got a really good location, and overall, it's a wonderful place. Uh, my next trip, I'm planning on staying at the Cosmo, but I don't know when that next trip is. It's kind of, you know, time frame is my next trip maybe two years from now. But it is what it is. These are my top ten places I would recommend anyone going to Las Vegas to stay at. Uh, again, it's my opinion, my experience drives that. If you have any other places you would recommend, post them down in the comments. I'm very interested in finding out what other people think. Again, down below the video in the one section are links to Vegas channels I think you would like if you're interested in Las Vegas. They have a lot of tips and a lot of things to do. Um, if you enjoyed the video, Hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment again, tell me what you think are great places to stay. Um, normally I post video game videos and I post them four times a week. So if you don't want to miss out, and also, hey, I will post videos like this sometimes. So hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and anytime I post videos, you will be told. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, wishing you a Merry Christmas, and thanks for stopping by.